We trust you, Minister yeah. Monturas, you will bless us mightily. It will help us that in this, that we shall have testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Faith Lord, because you are great. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is the 26th day of November. Uh, 28, sorry, 28th of November. And uh, today we are looking at Sunday School. The quarter review, review of the quarter. So there will be some quiz uh, because many of us were here some weeks ago. So maybe the first question. Uh, this is a review. So review of what we have been doing for the past quarter. For the past quarter is four months, yes? For yes. the past four months, what we have been doing. So the topics we have treated, the things we have talked about. So who can remember some of the topics that we were treated, some of the things that we, we did? Me. The weapons of our warfare, very good. The Beatitudes from Matthew 5. What? Beatitudes yes. from Matthew 5. Okay. The trials of faith. The trials of our faith, very good. Dynamics of prayer. Okay. Dynamics of prayer. Okay, very good. So we have several topics that we treated here. Several things that we, we did. Uh, several topics that we treated. Max, uh, we have several topics, we have several things that we talked about. And uh, all of them here, like we have said, the trials of our faith. Uh, but what, which one can we remember? What topic, what lessons do we remember from some of these topics that we treated? What lessons do we remember from some of them? Sister Amaka. Like last week, the weapons of warfare, we learned about the full armor of God. We learned about the various examples, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and yes, it is required to put on the full armor of God to resist the strategies of the enemy and to fight against the warfare of our enemies. Okay, so the one you did last week to put on the armor of God to fight against our enemies, to, to fight against our enemies, to put on that armor. So when we put on that armor, what are the things? Uh, is it just putting on, how do we put on the armor? Is it just going to, to a place, going to the military zone, or just how do we get those armor? What are those armors? And how do we put them on as Christians? Um, we can do that daily by building a relationship with God. The, the, the way, when we pray daily, we are secure because we call God to like, sustain us and to protect us you know, before we go about our daily activities and studying the word of God so many things that um, you need to building a stronger relationship between us and the spirit of God in us by doing this every day we can be able to feel secure and God's protection will be around us and prevent harm from coming our way. All right, thank you very much, our sister. But is it enough to just do all those things? Are there certain things that we can we can actually inculcate? Are there certain things we can actually do as well as Christians? Pastor Robert? Um, when we are talking about the armor of God, yes, uh, as you mentioned, there are things that we need to do because when you look at them individually, you see that they all fulfill a certain part. For example, you have the shoes of readiness to preach the gospel. And what does that mean? That means that once we wear it, we are ready at all times to share our testimony, to tell others about the word of God. Then you have the belt of truth. You cannot wear the belt of truth and still be lying, yes, uh, or be giving false statements. Yes, you cannot wear the helmet of salvation and yet be living a life yes, in sin or the breastplate of righteousness. Also, it talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yes, and you cannot have the word, you cannot say you are carrying out the word of God when you don't even know what the word of God entails. So these are all in its own way symbols of the gospel and the truth. In, the, uh, in, in God, but then they are what we also need to be practicing on a daily basis. All right, thank you very much, sir. So we have talked about, uh, Pastor has talked about, he has wrapped it up. Um, also, we know that um, breastplate of righteousness as well. When we are not holy, when we don't hold on to 
the, 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 the salvation that we have. And when we don't hold on to, to holiness, all these things are not. They are just things that we just do, they are just exercises. They are not spiritual exercises. So there is a difference between exercises and spiritual exercises. So these things are not spiritual exercises. And it's only spiritual exercises that can classify us, that can put us in that place that God wants us to be spiritually, spiritually minded, and to be able to face the warfare. So when we talk about breastplate, when we talk about warfare, are we actually fighting? Why do we need this warfare? Are we actually fighting? Because I remember last week, I think um, Pastor um, Brother Banky was talking about uh, being righteous, being holy. Like, if you don't have the holiness of God, you will not be able to do all those things. Now, how are we actually fighting? What do we need this holiness? What do we need all these things that we have mentioned? That Sister Amaka and Pastor Lapa have mentioned. Why do we need them? Can we just be a normal Christian, just go to church? You don't want the breastplate of righteousness. You don't want all these things. You don't want anything to do with them. You just want to be a simple Christian. You know, growing up, we used to say, okay, I just want to be a church, go out, go to church, be there, don't want to participate, don't want to do much, just go there and go come back. Is it enough to just be a particip um, participant Christian, not really, not really doing you know, all, are we actually going to use all these things, all these instruments, are we actually going to use them or we are not going to use them, they are just rhetoric, they are just theory, they are not something we do to practicalize. Because me, I like fighting, I like I wanted to join the military. I wanted to join the military, but some people did not allow me. So, is it okay to just have those things? Are we going to use them? Or as Christians, we are not meant to fight. We are meant to use them. We are not going to. Are we going to fight a physical battle? Or I don't know. What What do you think? Um, well, according to the Word of God, that says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of the dark world. So every day there are constant battles that we not see physically but we fight every day in the spirit realm because there are a lot of things that are done that our physical eyes cannot see. So when we put on the full armor of God every day and we keep doing the things that we have listed um, previously, we can be able to stand against their um, curtains and against their strategies in the spirit realm and to disrupt everything that they are planning against us and to feel secure as well. Very good. Thank you very much. So security, to feel that security, to be able to do all those things, to be able to have that mindset and to be able to get on with our lives. Every day, as you said, daily life is war. Every day you wake up, it's war because there are people that didn't wake up. So there are battles in the spiritual realm to take people's life, to take uh, Christians' life, to make Christians uh, fall, to do certain things. So there are battles in the way, you know, the devil appears. Uh, in, 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 for Job, we all know the story, the devil appeared to propose something to God. And I'm pretty sure that the devil, if we are who we say, who we think we are, the devil must have also proposed certain things to God. And God must have, okay, do this way, do this, or don't do this, don't do this. So there are constant warfare that are happening in the spiritual realm that we are not aware of. And because we don't see them, because we don't even feel them, it doesn't mean they don't happen. It just means that God is actually winning them, is actually fighting them on our behalf. And we should not be ignorant of that. And may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, so I want to add to what Sister Maka said. Um, there is nobody on this earth that is without temptation. So whether you're a Christian or you're not Christian, because we all are being drawn by our desires. We are tempted by our desires. So putting on this whole armor of God means that when you are tempted by your desire, you will stand strong, you will stand firm. You will, God will show you an escape way out of it. Thank you very much. So it also goes into the physical as well. So we talked about the spiritual aspect. So he is talking about the physical aspect. The physical aspect of it will be able to withstand the pressure, with the pressures of life, uh, test, um, temptations. Will be able to withstand temptations, the pressures of life, the vices of the enemy, the vices of the of the of the, of the evil one. They are all around us. The vices of the enemy are there, and they are there to make us fall. So. The spiritual, the, the physical as well goes with the spiritual as well. It's what you do in the physical. It's how you live your physical that actually controls the spiritual as well. And may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, um, after talking about warriors fighting, what else? What topic do we know 
that probably goes hand in hand, that we treated in the last four months, that goes, maybe not entirely hand in hand, but that is similar to fighting, that is similar to spiritual warfare. We talked about several topics here. So what else do we think is also there for us? So what other topic? That is related. Okay, we talked about um, blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see heaven. Mm -hmm. Merciful, they obtain mercy. Those that are hunger and thirst for righteousness. Dynamics of prayer. Different. There are different ones. Yeah. So I think these are series. Yeah? There are different ones. We started with being thankful. We went to sanctification. From being sanctified, we went to blessed are the poor in the spirit. Yes. Uh, integrity. We went to integrity. All these things they go hand in hand. They affect who we are spiritually. They affect how we see things spiritually, how we see things physically, how we see things spiritually. So, talking about being sanctified, being pure in heart, how do we as Christians, how do we attain that moment of sanctification? How are we sanctified? Is it just, just say we are sanctified? Just go kneel down in the morning and say, that is sanctifying me in the name of Jesus. I'm sanctified, I'm pure, and that's it. Is it just enough? Or we have to cook some concussion every day to drink it, or we have to do certain things to be sanctified. We have concussions in Christian dogs, so you don't know. People drink concussions in, in, the, in the occult world. But there are concussions in the Christian dog. What are the concussions that we need to, to have as Christians to so take every morning? And do we can we miss them or it's very compulsory? What what are the things? What are the things we need to do to be sanctified as Christians? We don't have to drink any drink or things, <laughs> but uh, we need to, like the things that have been mentioned already, live by the word of God. We have to continue, apart from like living our lives normally as well, we have to continue asking God for grace as well to be able to do some things. And of course, maybe the thing, concussion, maybe like praying. The blood of yeah. Jesus, yeah. Yeah, and always like committing your life into your hands mm -hmm. and always understanding also that. So things are not really like normal and we need God as well to ask for the help of God generally in our lives and we continue to make um, cautious efforts as well mm -hmm. to be pure. Alright, thank you very much. Pertaining with the concussion, actually as a Christian we're doing concussion. Because we drink concussion when we come here in partaking in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. That's good, yeah. That's a concussion. Okay. So it's not only the, the, the other people also do. Okay. It means that we are fortifying our body, we are fortifying our soul, we are fortifying our spirit. And we don't give room for anything like disease, we don't give room for anything like temptation. And we are constantly washed by blood of Jesus. Because when we drink that concussion and when we pray, that ask God, when we plead the blood of Jesus, everything will not have effect in our life. Amen. Thank you very much, my brother. So, I also uh, believe that on a daily basis, yes, uh, as Christians, we should let our praise be more than our prayer. And this will be the most important. Because once we wake up in the, in the morning, we realize that God has given us another chance of grace yes, to live and to make the best of our life and what He plans for us. So we should praise Him and this is what we now offer unto God, not just what we want from Him, but what we can give Him as well. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, the beginning of this series, it talks about be thankful, to be thankful to God. As Pastor has said, because that's capsule, that's like the, the beginning. If you are not a thankful Christian, it will be difficult for you to go to God. It will be difficult for you to, to hold on to the armor of God because you don't appreciate what God, the little God has given unto you. So how would you be able to I will be able to embody the much that you want in sanctification, in, in warfare, in breastplate of righteousness. You will not be able to embody it totally. So as Pastor mentioned, we need to be thankful. We need to be a thankful Christian. Every day, everything that happens in our lives, we need to have like a regular way of thanking God. In our minds, in our hearts, just saying thank you to God. Let it be like something you do unconsciously. Consciously and unconsciously, it just happens in you. And that way, God will know that, yes, we are filled with thank, uh, thanksgiving. And God can, uh, we can be able to become sanctified and we can have all the other stages uh, of 
uh, all the other processes of being a Christian. Because all these things are stages. They are like they are like they're like things that we have to do to be. I think it's not possible to say you are a complete Christian because when you say you are a complete Christian, you have everything. You 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 probably speak in tongues. You 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 can you can interpret tongues. You can do everything that is that is Christianly. But I think it's not entirely possible. But to be that which God wants us to be. So all these things are things that we should have at the back of our mind to make us to be that which God has proposed for us to be and that which we desire in God to be and may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So what other topic do we remember? What other topic? I will not be mentioning all the topics because of our time and I want us to also remember seven things as well. So trials of faith, very good. Assurance of salvation. Okay, assurance of salvation, trials of faith as well. Prayer, um, how to pray, dynamics of prayer. <laughs> prayer, very good. So how to pray, okay, we have Bible scholars here, dynamics of prayer. So, out of all these topics, you talked about trials of faith, you talked about um, dynamics of uh, prayer, you talked about prayer, yes? yes? Assurance of faith, assurance of salvation. salvation, yeah, assurance of salvation. So, all these things, what are the topics, what are the things that stood out for us? What are the uh, lessons we can learn from these topics? So dynamics of prayer, Sister Iberi, maybe you can start with you. What did you learn from dynamics of prayer? Okay, like um, Pastor said, one of the first things we should always do when, before asking for anything from God is to thank God and also ask for forgiveness from God. So you can't just pop in every time. And of course, there's sometimes that you're in an emergency um, situation where you you just you know ask God for something immediately, like when you're in like. I don't know, like, mm -hmm. fast reaction, but generally when you actually go to God in prayer, it's very good to give thanks to God and also ask God for forgiveness and also ask God for grace and then you can go on with begging. Okay, with begging, yes. <laughs> we are not doing Please, 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 we are not children. Okay, yes, you can go with begging God. So, with begging God, yes, with asking God, with communion with God. I think... One thing that you mentioned here, this is like steps. These are steps. This is like communion. When you have a communion with someone, it's better than just going to the person and just begging and just asking. When you fellowship with person with someone, when you have a friend, uh, all of you, we all have friends. I think you all have several friends. And if you have someone that you are, is not that close to you, and you go to the person and say, please lend me your clothes, lend me your shirt, how would you feel? Sister Tolani, if someone that is not close to you, okay, if me, I come to you, for example. I'm close to you, but I, I think we are not very, 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 very close. So if I come to you and say, Sister Tolani, I love your, your shoes. I want it for, for who? For my sister in Nigeria. Can you give it to me or something? How would you feel? I would think you're joking. I would think I'm joking. Very good. Yes. So maybe that's what that's the way God also thinks as well. That when we come to him and we ask him for certain things, because we are not very close to him, because of the relationship, we don't have a very close relationship with him. He feels that we are joking, we are not serious about this because you don't even have that bond with him. You don't have that communion, that fellowship with him. So we need to build that fellowship. We need to build that relationship with God first. And once we have that, it will just be like you are talking. It will just be like you are, before you even ask, the person will even say, take it. If you have a very close friend, you know the friend needs something. Before the person asks something, you even say, take it, take it. I have it. There is no problem. I have it in abundance. We all know our God is a God that has in abundance. So if if he has an abundance and he sees that we need, we don't need to ask him because our friends are saying, take this, it's not a problem, I have it, you are my friend, we talk every day, I know you need it, take it. So before we even ask, he gives it to us. So that relationship, that communion should be there. When it's there, every other thing would follow. As our pastor always say, Matthew 6, 33, he should seek first the kingdom of God and everything shall follow. So when you seek that kingdom of God, Every other thing that you seek, it will just be easy. And may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, assurance of salvation, Sister Amaka. Uh, well, I think I what I learned from the topic is that, first of all, in order for us to gain salvation, we should believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him up from the dead on the third day. And also, I also learned that in the process of this, that most most of us as believers 
what we had like different encounters that brought us to God. We had different encounters that made us to give our lives to Christ. Maybe some people may feel like it was in a miraculous way, like they were believing in God for something and God gave it to them. And that was now what drew their attention to God and made them to repent and give their lives to Christ. Why some people, maybe they might have witnessed some miraculous things like God raised somebody from the dead. So, so many circumstances. And it might not be a solid foundation for us if that is what we build our salvation on. So what I learned basically is the fact that we should build our foundation, uh, our assurance on the word of God. Like faith in the word of God is what makes us to be assured that we are saved. When we constantly study the word of God, when we constantly believe in the promises of God, then we know that we are saved and we are assured of salvation forever. Very good. Thank you very much. So we should build our assurance, our foundation on God, on the word of God. Anything that is not outside, you know, when pastor preaches, he tells us that anything that is he's saying from the uh, he's teaching us, we should go ahead and check it in the Bible, anywhere we should check. So the truth. And the word of God is based on the truth. So we should build our salvation on the truth, not on lies, not telling ourselves that, what, I'm married to someone? No, I'm not married to someone, but we are together. Is it the truth? We are together if that is the way God wants it. It's not the truth. It's a lie. But we have a way of making it truth in our mind. And now we tend to seal our conscience. We tend to seal our conscience. And may God help us in our mighty name. So we should base our salvation on the truth, the word of God, which is the truth. And the things that are being said, uh, the, the, the things that the, 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 the prophecy that comes out from the uh, from the prophet, from the people of God as well. So we should build our salvation on that. Very good. Who else? Yes, Mr. Henry talked about trials of faith. So, a um, quick review of trials, trials of faith is that uh, as a Christian, we will be tried and we pass through trials um, with endurance, with patience. But so many men of God, even in the Bible, stood trials like Abraham, for example. God promised Abraham that um, he will be a father of all nations, that his seed will be a son and multitude. But it took so many years for that for that uh, promise to be fulfilled. So it means that Abraham was a man of patience, and in patience and in prayer, and in faith, constantly believing that God's word is sure and it will always come to pass. And it came to pass. So other people that stand trial for Job, for example, Job said that even if um, even if I'm slain, yet I will not deny God. It means that no matter all the circumstances that surround him, he's not going to deny God. So trials is like a, is like a stepping stone. It's like a two ways. It's either it can make you or it can mar you, depending on how um, you face it. So if you face trial and you come out victorious by the by the help of God and other things involved with your patience and endurance and faith, God will elevate you to, to the next level because God said that he will elevate us. And also when you fall into, when you fail your trials and fall into temptation, is a, is a step backward then whatever other circumstances that might appear to you because when we are tempted, when we are tried and when we fail that test, sin will encroach into our heart and from there, there, we can also commit multiple sins using um, David for an example. David, uh, when they say when kings went for war, David was at home, um, gallivanting on top of the roof and saw a naked woman. So David was tried there and he failed the, 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 uh, the test and it led to uh, um, adultery that led to, to murder. So trials of faith is what as a Christian that can help us to move on from class one to class two to class three to to become a better and stronger christian all right thank you very much our brother so you gave a very good example david what who knows who can tell us exactly what happened with david because david was a man that always praised god yes he was into instruments he was always full of thanksgiving he was always thanking god dancing he was that person that was you could say that 
the presence of the Lord was with him because the Bible makes us to believe that God dwells in the presence of his people. And like when you praise God, God inhabits the praise of people. So he was a person that you know that God, you know that God was always around him. So how was he able to still fall into the temptation? How was he able to still do that even though the presence of God was, was around him? Forgive me for saying this, but David had multiple wives. He wasn't satisfied. Once a cheater, always a cheat. <laughs> <Like it. laughs> Once a cheat, always a cheat. Okay, so once a cheat, is always a cheat. Yes. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> so once a cheat, always a cheat. So, you know... <laughs> I wouldn't say David... I wouldn't say David is a cheater because David is not the only one that has multiple wives in the Bible. You cannot compare David with Solomon. But we say that Solomon, Solomon has 700 wives with 300 concubines. Mm -hmm. And Jacob has multiple of wives. So for David's case, is, is, the, is, is the desire, the lust. Because continually we need to subject our, our flesh. So David is also as a, a, a normal human being like the rest of us. Even Bible says that Moses is the meekest man on the earth, but also Moses have anger issue. Even no matter the presence of God, Moses still disobeyed God in some certain things. So as a human, as a as a child of God, we cannot we cannot escape that. Uh, that desire, that desire which is sin, because the first man, which is Adam, sin and sin encroached into this world. So that sin has been in the world. So uh, it's because of David's desire, that loss of the flesh, that made him to fall into that temptation. All right, thank you very much, our brother. So our sister is also, in a way, she said cheating, yes? Maybe not cheating, because why she said cheating is because he slept with her before marrying her. In my opinion, that is where the sin came from. If he had married her legally before actually um, sleeping with her, I think the Bible wouldn't have classified it as sin. But he slept with the woman before actually getting. Uh, was he even married to her? I think he was. was he? Yeah, it was after he got married. Yeah, after he got married, now about Solomon. So this, this is this is the main reason why it was classified as sin, and he did it out of idleness. I think we were doing this in some weeks ago uh, in Bible study and pastor was saying one of the main reasons that made him to sin is idleness, not having things to do. When he's been idle, he didn't have anything. If he was in the war, in that war you will not be looking at the naked woman. In that war when you are facing battle, fighting for your life, you will not be looking at the naked woman. So I think that's one of the reasons why he fell as well. So, and um, then in those days it was allowed, maybe it was, it was there people could marry multiple women, they could marry once you marry them legally, it's not a rape, it's not a um, forceful uh, thing. So it, it was at, uh, acceptable then. So that is that is that. So David was a man of a man of uh, prayer, a man of uh, a man of praise to God, thanks to God. And there is one last um, Bible, there is one last topic I want us to touch on, which is integrity. We no one mentioned it, but I think it's also very important. Integrity. We as Christians, what does integrity mean to us? What does what is integrity to us? Honesty. Um, integrity by definition means honesty. Honesty, very good. So it means honesty, being honest. So how can you as Christians be honest every day? Is it something that is easy? Is it something that is possible? Is it attainable or it's, it's rather theory? It's not in practice, it's not possible. It's possible, okay. but um, like it's not very casual, not say, because there are some situations where there's like an urge to not be honest, and not just with what you say, but what you do as well. But um, asking for the grace of God mm -hmm. and just you know actively also trying, because if you ask for the grace of God and you're not really like pushing yourself to not do that, then it may not really work out. So. Okay, thank you very much. So. What if, if you withhold something from someone? Someone is asking you something, an information. You don't say, you are not lying, you are not dishonest in a way, but you're also not saying the truth. You're just keeping quiet. Is it still classified as dishonesty or it's, it doesn't, it's, 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 it's okay not to say? If you don't say it, you are not lying, yes? 
So if I'm asking you something now, an information, yes, you don't want to divulge. You don't want to give me that information. And you just, you're just keeping quiet. You're just like shaking your head, doing this, like dramatizing for me. You don't want to tell me. Is it still dishonesty or wrong? You feel it's okay. You can keep something. It depends. Okay. If it's, for example, there's something going on and you know that this is something like you should stick up on, for example, I don't know what's, I can't remember what stick up, but you're like, you're standing in the middle, you're not really saying anything, so you don't look like you're bad or, and if you say, you know, the truth, you, you know the past. But then if it's something like, something private to someone's life and you're asking the person, the person doesn't want to share the information, mm -hmm. this is not an honest situation, mm -hmm. you need to mind your business. Okay, very good. Yeah, you need to mind your business. So, you are talking about laws, yes? So there are laws. You need to mind your business when something like that is happening, okay? So for your question, uh, we say that it, um, as a child of God, you should constantly ask God for um, discernment and wisdom. Like a very say, it, it depends. So wisdom will tell you when to speak and when not to speak. And also the Bible said uh, to he that knows how to do good and doesn't do it, and unto him is a sin. So there are some certain things that, okay, if you know that, you have to do it to be able to uplift your brother and you don't say it or you don't help the person. So unto you is like accountable to sin. And usually it's not all the time that we should open our mouth. So we should ask for wisdom to know when to open our mouth to say and when not to say anything. Thank you very much, our brother. So we should ask for God to give us the wisdom. And I think the most important part piece of this, I think we did this also some months ago in the Bible, uh, in the Sunday school, and what we talked about was your conscience. What your conscience, when you don't say it, is your conscience actually telling you it's wrong? If your conscience is telling you it's wrong, there and there, correct it. But if you are saying it, and something inside of you, you have a strong conviction that says it is perfectly okay, then you are good. But if your conscience is telling you that it's wrong, then you should correct it immediately. And may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Any other topic, any very quickly, because our time is uh, fast spent? No. Our Father, let us pray. Our Father, our God, we thank you for today. Thank you because we have presented ourselves before you. Thank you for the beautiful weather, even though many may not like it, but we adore your holy name because everything is happening at its own season. It is a time for the snow to, ha to happen, and yes, we have it. Daddy, we thank you. We adore your holy name. We worship you because of the great and wonderful things you have done for us. We thank you for bringing us here safe and sound today. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for bringing our families together. Daddy, we worship and adore your holy name. Daddy, we commit the rest of today's service unto your hands. We pray that your Lord will take all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and minister unto us as a whole and as individuals in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be my help also, Lord, faithful one. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are great. The word that we have heard today, Daddy, let it not speak against us on the day of judgment in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Thank you.